the graphs of y equals f at x and y equals 3 f at x intersect at. All right, so what we notice here is that to change f at x to 3 f at x, we would have to make it three times as tall. So each y coordinate gets tripled. So to go from this to three times, you'd have something three times as tall except for any coordinate that is at zero. So in other words, three becomes nine, one becomes three, a half becomes one and a half, one becomes three, and three becomes nine. But when the y coordinate is zero, you triple that, it's still zero. So in other words, the only point that f at x and three times f at x would share is this point A, because it doesn't move. All the other ones move upward, and there's no other intersection points, so the answer has to be A. All right, problem two. What the graph of y equals f at x is shown below. When the graph of y equals f at x is reflected on the line y equals x, the number of invariant points is. All right, so what's an invariant point? An invariant point is simply any point where the x coordinate and the y coordinate are the same. So in other words, one, one, two, two, three, three, zero, zero, negative one, negative one, negative two, negative two, and so on. So it's any point in this function that intersects with the line y equals x. y equals x. Okay, now I'll switch colors. All right, so here's the intersection point right here. Negative one, negative one. And then this point right up here, which is, I'd say one and a half, one and a half. So when we take this function and we reflect it on y equals x, all the points are going to change except for these two points because they're right on the reflection line so they stay put. So the answer here, the number of invariant points stays at 2 because none of the other points are going to intersect with this reflection line, only the invariant points. And they're going to stay uh, intersected after the reflection takes place. So the answer is two. All right, so we have a graph here. We need to figure some things out about it. The characteristics that describe the function y equals f at x are something, something, and something. All right, so we notice that this is a quintic equation. It goes down, then it inflects, then it goes down, then up, then down. All right, so we need to either pick one or two as an equation that fits this graph. Right away, we notice that when x is equal to zero, y is not equal to zero. So therefore, x cannot be one of the zeros. In other words, x cannot be a term just sitting by itself like this. Because if this was the equation, then the graph would pass through 0, 0. So by process of elimination, we know that the first one has to be uh, the form of the equation. So there's that. The sine of A. Well, the graph starts out by um, decreasing, and then it ends by decreasing. So we know it has to be negative. The sine of A. A just being the coefficient at the front of the equation, or excuse me, the front of the expression here. The rule is if the function both starts and ends negative, then it has to be a negative. Or, excuse me, if it starts and ends going uh, decreasing, then it's a negative coefficient. If it starts and ends going upward, 
increasing, then it's a positive coefficient. But in this case, we have a negative one. So, so far we have one, four, and what's the last one? The values of B and C. All right, so we know that B is the zero that is on this positive side of X. Why? Because it's a parabola. And whenever we have an expression that's a square, it cannot create a flat, uh, right, there's two, f uh, actually three, there's three spots where the graph goes flat. And that, you cannot have, an, an uh, excuse me, you cannot have a flat point that does this from a, uh, an even number exponent. Even number exponents can only make, uh, you know, loops like this. It cannot flatten out and then keep going negative. That's how we know that the, the cube power is over here. In other words, when x is equal to c, y is equal to zero, but it's over here. This is c. And b is over here because it's it's the even number exponent, which can only do one thing, which is make a curve like this. It cannot go flat and then continue in its same direction. Only odd number exponents can do that. So from this, we can tell that c, the zero that's inside of the the cubed power, has to be this. Um, illustration over here, whereas the even number exponent, the b, the b0 has to be over here. So b is positive and c is negative. b being positive, c being negative, we have 5. So 1, 4, 5. So that would be our response, 1, 4, and 5.